All right. Well, um, I think I'm live. It, uh, I like having te technical difficulties when I do this, so that's always fun. Um, so I had a little bit of a false start, but it, I think I'm live now. Um, I'm not alone, too, so that's good news. Um, so thanks for joining me, the folks that are here. As you can see, I kind of put a dive flag up behind me. It's kind of a temporary last-minute thing, but hey, it's there, so dive strong. I uh, don't plan on being here for a long time, so if you were like, oh, man, I don't want to listen to Mike talk forever, don't worry, I'm not going to talk for a long time. Just thought I would uh, jump on and do that dive table tutorial that I was kind of playing with how to do uh, yesterday. So... Um, Let's get into it. I put a link in the chat and in a couple spots to get to the dive tables that I'm going to play with. Um, so if you want to follow along, and but I'm going to also have it on the screen. So the link will bring you to this page, um, which is Open Water Diver Resources. It's the link we send to all our students so they can quickly ignore all of the stuff. But it's a lot of the presentations that they get in class and then some other kind of cool informational stuff for them. And then at the very bottom, underneath, below the dive computers, uh, is the dive tables. And there's a reason, because dive computers are way more important, and you should know how to use those, and they're going to give you a lot more bottom time than a stinking dive table. But people want to know how to use the dive tables, so um, they're here, and, uh, and that's what I'm going to go through. So I'm going to use the NOAA table, I'll explain a couple of the differences between that and some other tables that are out there, but not too in depth. Uh, someone had requested that it kind of go into the math, uh, the you know, the difference between the different tables. So the Navy table and the NOAA table are essentially the same. I'll point out the differences as we go through the NOAA table, but I don't want to get into like the compartments and all that fun stuff between the Buhlman table or the Patty RDP and these tables. It's just a little bit above uh, what I want to go through today. It's not that you guys can't understand it, um, you all certainly can. I just don't want to kind of get into that. Uh, so if you look at the screen now, hopefully you're looking at the same screen I am, and it says uh, NOAA, no comp decompression, dive table, multiple air dives, uh, which is kind of a cool thing because uh, NOAA makes them for the nitrox mixes as well. So on that link, I should have had all the nitrox mixes um, uh, tables as well. So if you're diving nitrox 32, you can pull that up. But here's the air table. And you'll hear me refer to it as tables a lot, not necessarily dive table. And I'm not doing that Michigan thing where I add an S. Uh, there's actually three different tables here. On this uh, sheet, they're labeled chart one, chart two over here, and then chart three, which would be on your left as you're looking at the screen. Um, chart one, uh, let's start with that. So chart one, if you just kind of glance at it, it's somewhat, you can kind of figure it out. You have, uh, sorry, my cursor's not bigger, but you have your depth here, and this is in, uh, meters of salt water or seawater, and then feet of seawater. Uh, we're gonna use the feet, so you can see it starts at 40 feet and goes all the way down to 130 feet. If you were just gonna do uh, one dive, you're just going out for a dive with your buddies, uh, this is actually all you would need is table one or chart one here. In fact, you wouldn't even need all these numbers in between, you would just need the number if you found the depth that you're going to go to, you would just need the number all the way to the right. But let's talk about how we find the depth first. So all these dives are square profiles. So the entire dive happens, according to this dive table, at your deepest depth. So whatever the deepest depth you plan on hitting, that's what the whole dive is going to be at. And you can see it starts at 40 feet, and it works in 5-foot increments for a while, and then it switches to 10-foot increments. So if you went to 42 feet... Uh, you would round to your deepest depth, so you'd actually use the 45 feet. And if you went to 46 feet, I think you got the hang of it, you would then use the 50 feet. So you're going to do some rounding. You always round to the deepest depth for the higher time when it's a time situation. So let's look at um, let's look at 80 feet. So like we were diving on my dad's boat up in Port Santa Lake, and we were diving on the Regina. Um, so that's 80 feet. So we go down here to 80 feet. If uh, you came over from Canada, it would be 24.4 meters, but 80 feet. And you can ignore all of these numbers that start from 5 and go to 36. You could ignore all those if you were just going to do a single dive. All you would be concerned about is this 39 in the red, the red 39 in the circle here. That's the limit. That's the longest you can stay at that depth and not have decompression obligation. So we went down to 80 feet. 
we could stay down there for 39 minutes. And if we, uh, as long as we stay down there less than that, we can go up to the surface as we normally would, which still means we're going to do a safety stop, but we could just end the dive. We don't have to do any decompression obligation. And so you can see if you're just doing a single dive, that's all you would need. But usually sport divers were going out uh, for multiple dives. We're kind of making a day of it. So that's why all these other numbers are here. But this number in the red here, that is your maximum no stop time. No stop being decompression stops. Uh, you're still going to do a safety stop and you're still going to come up nice and slow because that's how you're going to decompress. The other file that I had on that resources page is the U.S. Navy tables. Um, and I got that opened up here. So at the top of it, you have the Navy table, which is very similar. Um, it just has a little bit different orientation, but you kind of see the same thing. There's an 80 here, and then it just kind of cuts right to the chase and says, hey, 39 minutes is the longest you can stay there. Um, but the reason I'm pulling this up is not to show you that, hey, they're the same, is to scroll down onto the second page, and then we actually have this worksheet. And this kind of helps us keep track of what we're doing with a dive table. So the other nice thing this does for us is it's a visual representation of a dive, right? So you have, here's the, our diver, you know, hey, I'm about to go into the water. So I'm drawing with the mouse. And they go in, they go down to one depth, according to the table, and they stay there the whole time. So it doesn't account for any, any variance in your dive. Because let's face it, you're not at, if we were going to go dive the Regina, which is in 80 feet of water, we're not at 80 feet the whole time. In fact, we might not really even go down to 80 feet because it's just the mud the big props at 45 feet, and we're gonna check out some cracks and some of the ship up at you know, 50 feet, 60 feet, but the tables don't work that way. So everything's done at the deepest depth. And the other thing this kind of highlights here because it uses this word bottom time is when you start your ascent, you don't have to count that. So we could stay at the bottom for 39 minutes and then take our time going up nice and slow, of course, stopping at 15 feet for a three minute safety stop, we take our time going up nice and slow, and that time doesn't count in terms of the bottom time. So when we look at this table where it says 80 feet, you can only stay there 39 minutes. That's 39 minutes at the bottom. So that's not counting your safety stop or your ascent time. Now, in the reality, 39 minutes at 80 feet on a cold Great Lakes dive is probably a bit longer than most people want to do. And we want to learn how to use the dive tables, not just plan a single dive. So that's why we have all of these other numbers here, because um, our dive might not be 39 minutes. Maybe it's only half an hour. So we have all these other numbers here. So if we went out and we did a dive on the Regina for half an hour, we would, you know, here's our depth, 80 feet. We're going to follow that over until we find 30 minutes, which there is no 30 minutes. But again, you're going to round to the, the next deepest depth and the next higher time. And so there's a 32. So we would use this 32 here for... You know, that's how long we're going to dive because we wanted to do an 80 foot dive for 30 minutes. Now, this doesn't tell us anything, but, and this is where sometimes the dive tables can get frustrating because it's not intuitive of what you do with that number, but you follow it down. So, when you follow that number on this table, on some you follow it um, horizontal, this one you follow it down vertical, and we see that our ending pressure group is an H. And that's just a way to kind of keep track of how much nitrogen is in our body. Uh, we are an H pressure group. So if I was to go back to my little table here and kind of fill this in, so, hey, I'm going to go to 80 feet, and my bottom time is going to be 30 minutes, and I would my ending pressure group would be an H. Cool. What does that do for me? Well, it allows me to keep track of that nitrogen, because if I was going to go then do a second dive, so I'm like, hey, this is cool. Let's go dive the sport. That's in 50 feet of water. Let's go do that next. We can't just start back right here, right? And look at this maximum time because we have leftover nitrogen in our body. The nitrogen just didn't disappear when we surfaced. So we got to account for this. And this here is an accounting for that. This is just, okay, you're doing a dive at 50 feet. This is how long you can stay there. And that's based on, there's no nitrogen in you. So we got to account for that. So we account for that by, hey, your pressure group H. Now we're not going to jump right back into the water. We're going to have a surface interval time. So when you look at this chart here, this is what SI means, surface interval. So how long are we going to stay at the surface? Well, typical, you know, if we're out on the Great Lakes and we're doing a dive, let me see if that'll work. We're going to do our surface interval for an hour. One thing to note on surface interval time is we do it in hour minute format. 
So, and that's just because that's how we think when we're at the surface. You know, we think, oh, how long has it been? It's been an hour and a half. Um, so that's the format on surface interval. So when we look at table two, so now we're looking at the second table, these numbers here are all in hour and minute format. So here they were strictly in minutes. So this 100, this 102 is 102 minutes. Over here, if we found 102, uh, which I don't think we will, but if we did, it would be an hour and two minutes. So as an H diver, we want to account for our surface interval because during our surface interval, we're getting rid of nitrogen, right? We're off gassing. Our body's like, hey, get this extra nitrogen out of here. And so that's what we got going on here. Each of these little boxes is a range of time in terms of how long your surface interval is. So the first one here is a pretty long surface interval, six hours, 33 minutes to eight hours and 52 minutes. So that's a pretty long surface interval. That's like, uh, hey, we're coming back later on today, like way later on today. So that is uh, not the surface interval we're doing. We're doing an hour. So I'm gonna keep kind of scrolling down until I find the range of time that an hour falls into, and there it is. So 53 minutes to an hour and 44 minutes, that is my surface interval. And again, it's not super intuitive here, but once you kind of connect the dots, it's easy. So once I find this box, I then follow this arrow over, and I have my new pressure group. So now being at the surface, I've gotten rid of some nitrogen. I'm not in that H group anymore. So now I'm in that G group, G unit, or part of 50 cents crew now, okay? So now I'm in this G unit. So now we get to use table three. We still can't go back to table one yet, right? Because table one doesn't, is, okay, you're G. What do you want me to do with that? So we have to make G mean something. And so that's what table three is. Table three is the repetitive dive time. So table two was just figuring out our surface interval and our new pressure group. And table three is figuring out our repetitive dive time. Um, so this is, hey, we're jumping back in the water, but we got leftover nitrogen. We got residual nitrogen. And so that's actually what this is going to give you. It's going to give you residual nitrogen. So there's a little key down here at the bottom that kind of helps you figure out what the two numbers are. But the red number on the top is your residual nitrogen. And I'll come back and explain what that is. And the black number on the bottom is your adjusted no decompression stop time. So as a G diver, and we were going to go to 50 feet, let's look at what those two numbers are and let's explain what they are. So just like with table one, I got depths here. And just like with table one, you got to round to the deeper depth. So we're going to dive the sport. And that's about 45 feet of water, but water level is a little, little up. So let's say maybe it's 46, 47 when we get out there. So we're going to use 50 feet for our depth on the sport. Sport's very interesting shipwreck. It was one of the first iron hauled shipwreck sh ships, tugboats on the Great Lakes. So that's kind of pretty significant. So we're going to go dive that after the Regina. And then so we, we play battleship and line those two things up. And we got this box here. So 50 feet as a G diver. All right. So we got two numbers. And they're very similar numbers. It can be confusing because 49, 43, what the heck do those two numbers mean? Well, the red number on the top, if you're looking at a black and white screen, it's not going to be red, but it's still on the top. Uh, but the red number on the top is 49. And so that's residual nitrogen time. So what that means is when we jump in the water as a diver to do this dive as a G diver to 50 feet, it's like we've already been diving for 49 minutes in terms of the leftover nitrogen in our body. So we have to account for that. So if I'm going to go back to the little dive table where I jump in and I'm saying, hey, 50 feet, sorry, my handwriting's with a mouse. And when we jump in, we already have residual nitrogen time. That's what this RNT is, residual nitrogen time. When I jump in for this dive as a G diver, I got leftover nitrogen in my body. And actually that leftover nitrogen is like 49 minutes. So it's like I've already been diving for 49 minutes. Cool. One of the things I like about the NOAA table is it does some math for you and gives you this bottom black number, which is your adjusted time. So that's the longest you can stay there. And what that does for you is it makes it a little bit easier because you don't have to do an extra step. So we're going to go to table one and I'm going to explain what that extra step is. So here at table one, at 50 feet, we could have dove, it was the first dive of the day, for 92 minutes. Obviously, we can't dive for 92 minutes because it's We've already been diving, according to the table, for 49 minutes. We got 49 minutes of residual nitrogen time. So we would have to kind of do the math there and figure out what our real adjusted time was, which isn't a hard math. It's just some subtraction. But this table's got that number for us right there. So we cannot exceed 43 minutes because with 49 minutes of residual, 
that if we did a dive longer than 43 minutes, we would have exceeded this 92 here. So we got a little bit of a shortcut here for us with this NOAA table telling us that, hey, dude, you can't dive for longer than 43 minutes. Cool. Uh, I don't want to do that dive for that long. I want to do it for half an hour, just like the first dive. I want to do that dive for half an hour. And so that's what we're going to do. Before we go to table one here and figure that out, let's go to here and fill that in. So my bottom time is going to be 30 minutes, which is cool that I wrote this here, but it's not really my total bottom time because remember, I have 49 minutes of residual time. So this bottom time is actually going to go right here as well. And sometimes, like, I don't write it there half the time. I just kind of see that you don't bother writing it. But for the illustration purposes, we'll write it. So my actual total bottom time is going to be the RNT, residual nitrogen time, plus our actual bottom time, giving me a total bottom time of 79 minutes. So I think I did my math right there. So cool. When I jump in the water and go diving to the wreck of the sport at 50 feet, um, boom, it's like my dive is 79 minutes not 30 minutes. In terms of the dive table, it's like I went diving for 79 minutes. In all honesty, you did that on this first dive, except we didn't bother writing it because our residual was zero. Uh, we didn't, we, it was our first dive of the day, or it had been 12 hours since our dive, so we didn't bother adding zero for 30 because it would be stupid. We don't need to do that. Um, so we don't even bother with that on the first dive of the day. It's only on the repetitive dives do we do that. So now that I have all of this information, I can find out what that pressure group is at the end of the second dive. So maybe I want to do a third dive or, or, or a fourth dive, and I can kind of keep track of it. So all I need to do is use this number, the 79, and come back here to chart one, table one. So I go to 50 feet, and I find 79 minutes, which, hey, nope, there's no 79 minutes, but that's okay. There's an 80 minutes. So then, yep, 80 minutes, and I would follow that down. And there's my new pressure group. Okay. So there, I'm a K diver at the end of that. Then I could do another surface interval, find my new pressure group, go on and do another dive. But usually we do two dives when we're off there. So it's, it's not like it's hard to do, but if you're not doing them all the time, you can definitely be like, where do I go with this number? And where do I go with that number? So I, I get it when people get frustrated with dive tables. Also, and we'll, will go and kind of do the third dive, they don't give you a lot of dive time. Uh, they're pretty limited in their dive time. And the surface intervals on these are not, um, there's not a lot of flexibility on surface intervals. It's basically um, surface interval is less than two hours, you're only going to move up one letter group. So there's not a lot of play there. In fact, we'll, we'll do a third dive just to kind of show you how that would work. So say we, uh, we're going to do this, we finish this dive here and we want to wait uh, an hour again and do, uh, you know, do an hour surface interval, so one zero zero, And we want to go do the same dive. The sport was awesome. Uh, we want to kind of explore the area some more. So we want to do another 50-foot dive. Well, let's find out what our pressure group is. So again, we're going to use table two. And we're going to, we're a K diver. We're going to follow it down until we find an hour. Here it is. Yep, an hour. And we'll follow that over. And J diver. Cool. And then, oh, you look, as a J diver, oh, there's a lot of dives I can't do. I can't go deeper. And, okay, here we go. 50 feet. But notice how big that residual nitrogen time is. Now it's 73 minutes, which means my adjusted time is not going to be too long. I only have 19 minutes that I can do this dive. So this has to be a relatively short dive. So that right there should sell you on dive computers. <laughs> um you could see even from the surface interval, even at two hours, if we did a two-hour surface interval and we were an eye diver, we could only do that dive for 27 minutes. So we couldn't even do a half hour, even if we waited two hours. Um, three hours is when we can finally kind of do that dive. So computers, uh, yes, they're easier to use, which is kind of, you know, people think, oh, you're cheating because you use a computer instead of a dive table. And I'm a smarter, cooler diver because I know you use how to dive table. But we use dive tables because they get you more dive time. Um, that's just the plain facts. There's no, no getting around that. So when someone's like, I use a dive table, I'm a tough diver. You're like, yeah, you do short dives, man. I don't know what to tell you. Um, so dive computers definitely give you more time. One, they don't have the rounding, but also they are not doing this type of dive. You know, They're not doing this square profile where everything is done at the deepest part. The dive computer knows, yeah, you're at 50 feet, but now you're at 45, and now you're at 40, and now you're at 37. And so all of this 
you're getting credited for not being at that key part of the dive the whole time. And so dive computers are giving you more dive time. Um, you can continue to do these, boom, 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 you know, all throughout the day, um, you know, three, four, five, six dives a day, it works out. A couple of things you need to know with the dive table is you definitely need to do your deeper dive first. They, they do not uh, like it if you try to do a deeper dive after a shallow dive. In fact, you can kind of see that here on this table, how you lose some of these depths as your letter groups get uh, as they are. Yeah, I spit over my words there. You know what I'm getting at. Um, also, they're just going to be because they're, you know, they're basically the U.S. Navy tables, or in this case, it says a NOAA table, and they're just an extra step. They weren't really designed for people to do a lot of fun dives in a day. They were kind of designed for, hey, go get that done, and then that's it. We're done for the day. Uh, maybe we got to go back in the afternoon and do something, but that's it. So the surface intervals don't really work in your favor. That is where, like, the PADI REP can be a little bit more forgiving because there's definitely more credit for surface interval with that table. And it has to do with it, it has some more compartments. But again, I don't want to get into that so much right now. Um, but that table works the same as this. There's three tables. There's that kind of your table one, if you're just doing a single dive of the day, and then you manipulate it with the residual nitrogen time. So um, I have been talking for way too long. Uh, I, th I hope you have a better understanding of how these work. The big thing to do is to start kind of plugging in your dives. Don't be surprised if you plug in dives that you've done with your computer and the table won't let you do them. Uh, it's just, that's the nature of the table. And when that happens, be like, man, I'm glad I bought a computer because I wouldn't have been able to do these dives. But you just kind of play with them. That file uh, that I gave you, that link takes you right here so you can get access to them. I only have the worksheet on the regular Navy table. Um, the NOAA table, it's just a table by itself. I also have the nitrox table. Let's see if that opens up. Um, yep. So the nitrox table work exactly the same way, except it'll tell you what the percentage is of oxygen that you're using. So this is where you can get some more bottom time. We look at the, let's pull up nitrox 32. And let's zoom in so this isn't so small or you're zooming in on your own screen, hopefully. Just listening to me. So obviously because we have less nitrogen, because we have more oxygen in the air, we're getting more dive time. So that 50 feet, you know, we're getting, so it's almost doubled. It was, I think, 89 or 79 before, now it's 163. So they're set up the same way. Graphics might look a little bit different, but um, the NOAA tables have nitrox versions, which is super handy for us up here that use nitrox 32 a lot. All right, guys, um, I'm going to chime out here shortly. I'll give anyone opportunities for questions if they want. Doesn't look like there's, well, yeah, there's a lot of you here live. Um, but even if you aren't watching this live, you're watching this at some other point, uh, ask a question and I'll check in and chime in and, and answer it. Because I know it's a weird time, uh, Friday at 2.20, it is now. Um, so you're probably not watching this live. But if you watch it later and you got a question, go ahead and chime in. But thanks a lot for the folks that were here. I hope uh, you're like, oh man, dive tables. Yeah, I know how to use them. And I'm never going to use them because they're dumb and they don't give you as much bottom time. I bought a dry suit because I want to stay in the water longer. Why would I use dive tables? This is crazy. All right. Uh, this is the end.